escape the livestock ship and swim to freedom. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com for November 14th, 2016, with a look at some of the ways we are winning and solutions-oriented stories. It has been a couple of weeks since we've had a Good News Next Week episode, and it maybe feels like in some ways it's tough to find good news sometimes. This is crowdsourced and crowdfunded, just like all the other independent, non-commercial, alternative media monarchy outlets. And we get the stories from you. And our first story this week comes from our buddy Brock West, a new decentralized ride-sharing service joins the frenzy in Austin with a Bitcoin alternative. This is from BraveNewCoin.com. The social network for helpful people, Cell411, recently announced version 5 of their app for iOS and Android. The app offers a decentralized rideshare service like Uber or Lyft, but doesn't take a cut of the driver's fee, and users can pay with Bitcoin. Cell 411 rather launched back in August of 2015, and it's obviously, if you've been following the news, a crowded marketplace in Austin, as people have kind of been pushing back all around the world against decentralization. Now, I should even kind of clarify that. People haven't been pushing back against decentralization. The powers that shouldn't be are pushing back against decentralization. The people want decentralized people power. And it's going to be person-to-person, peer-to-peer, blockchain decentralized style. And that toothpaste is out of the tube. Payment methods accepted through the app include cash, credit cards, silver, Bitcoin, and other cryptocurrencies. And there's even a button for accepting barter in trade for the driver's service. So that's called Cell 411. And just one of the other ways that, again, the toothpaste is out of the tube and decentralization is taking hold. And these ideas are spreading. And I think with our second story, I can show you the way some of the ideas spread as we continue the idea of bartering. Italy's Barter Week provides free hotel stays for goods and services. Thousands of Italian bed and breakfasts are offering visitors to barter their skills and services such as music lessons or olive harvesting for free hotel stays. The initiative is called Barter Week and gives those who may not normally afford it the chance to travel. Barter Week has been held annually since 2009 and runs from November 14th. That's today as I come to you here from the People's Republic of Oregon as the diaper riots go wild and we're trying to be a bastion of sanity. It runs from November 14th through the 20th. It was started by an Italian bed and breakfast booking website after it discovered that one of its B&Bs used barter instead of normal payments for its business. So again, these ideas that we talk about here, the community fridges, the little free libraries, all of these decentralized ideas, those are the germs, those are the seeds, those are the things that spread out. And then some Italian company who runs a booking website says, oh, people are using barter, people are using cryptocurrency, people are looking for a new way to do things together. And that's what we're trying to do here. Our cover story this week is admittedly kind of a silly one, but I like kind of the larger implications and philosophies of it. I just saw it a couple of hours ago today before I started the tape. Of course, I follow a large amount of news, and you'll find some of those odd news stories, funny news stories. A cow escaped from a livestock ship in Perth and swam to 24 hours of freedom. Now, the end of that story is that ultimately he did get captured, but he pretty much put the South Perth police on a run for 24 hours. The photo of the cow swimming, again, almost kind of seems unnatural, and you see that, and you love that spirit. What did Carlin say? It's like seeing that, you know, sprig of grass come up through the concrete. It's just so fucking heroic and that's what we want and that's what we're excited about and everybody's in maybe their own different kind of livestock ship but i think as we've seen all around the world and i think you know you feel in your gut you see in your heart you see in your friends and family things are changing that this is a consciousness rising and we're not going to give into fear and we're not going to give into division the great thing about sort of sticking to our principles as best we can again, life has to be about compromise in a lot of ways, is that we can be both against the Trump riots and Trump himself. And that's the way we're going to continue to move forward. And again, I've got 11 plus years of media monarchy up online that you can show that we hopefully walk our talk and that the proof is in our pudding. Yeah, you may have heard there was a big selection last week, and it was a surprise season finale to America's Next Top President, but the positivity in some ways seemed to flow immediately. TPP dead in the water. Mexico and NAFTA say, oh, we're probably, Mexico and Canada say we're probably going to have to to maybe renegotiate or dump NAFTA. Russia, China call up and say, oh man, we should probably normalize relations. It's it's been awfully frosty lately. 
and the phony stock market had one of its best weeks in almost a decade. Those kind of changes happened immediately. And again, don't let yourself get bogged down in the divide and conquer. Deactivate those social network sites. Deactivate that Facebook page. We're scheming on an idea, and again, I don't have to scheme about it. It's very simple. It's called hashtag unfollow Friday. Coming up on Black Friday, that's the day after Thanksgiving, we'd like to let the mainstream corporate press know that we're kind of done with them, and we're going to click unfollow, and we're going to click unfriend, and we're going to remove ourselves from giving them the numbers. One of the other things that came out of this selection, 63 million Americans now live in states with legal recreational marijuana. That at least thankfully means people aren't going to be locked up for daring to use a plant. That story previously was from our buddy Sean Cathcart. We also got stories from Twisted Politics. But our final quick note on this Good News Next Week episode for the week of November 14th, 2016. Again, I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. Our friend and longtime Media Monarchy and Tragedy and Hope associate, Morgan Lesko. We actually met Morgan a couple years ago when we were still doing commercial, uh, or, or rather not doing internet radio. I was still working at uh, Portland Radio Authority. Morgan came through town, and we got to hang out and meet for a little while. Morgan is probably one of the most positive and effective people I can think of on this scene. You can follow along with their work at Wiki World Order, and Morgan Lesko not only has been working on something fantastic, but has also been recognized for it as well. Something called the Open Police Complaints. It's a new open source open app coming in 2017 that lets people anonymously submit tips and submit complaints about their police state force. So in a massive, massively large article on The Intercept, Morgan actually gets quoted. But even if departments refuse to engage with the site, meaning if the cops don't want it, and Silverman and Morgan Lesko, the project's main developer, expect it will take a few years to compile a significant volume of complaints and get departments to take notice. The reports will be accessible and easily searchable by anyone. Quote, in the worst case scenario that we don't get appropriate feedback from police departments, we still have these collected online. And it's all published in one place. It's not just lost on Facebook somewhere, scattered around in rant form. It's a public record. End quote. Huge congratulations to Morgan Lesko, and a huge lesson to even myself, as I can get bogged down in some Twitter rants. We're learning our way forward. There's no denying it, and there's no stopping it. And I need your support, and that's how we'll keep it going. I've been Media Monarchy for over 11 years now, and I sometimes, of course, it's not, it's not generally in my style. I don't flog my support that I need enough. My story is, I quit my commercial radio job a year and a half ago, almost two years ago now. That's when we turned Media Monarchy into the 24-7 listener-supported outlet that it always was meant to be. But I need your support. MediaMonarchy.com slash support has PayPal, but it also has Bitcoin, and it also has Patreon. Dot com slash media monarchy. That is the great way you sign up with Patreon, and that gives us monthly support that we need, and we can bank on it and budget on it, and that helps keep us going and growing, my friends. I'm so glad you spend the time here, and I'm so glad and excited about what we're going to move forward and keep doing. It might seem crazy out there. It might seem crazy out there, and it might feel like it's inside, but we're moving forward, and I appreciate you being here so much. Good news next week for the week of November 14th, 2016. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com reminding you, as always, my friends, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. <laughs>